Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, No Evidence That Climate Scientists or Journalists Have Any Integrity. There's some amazing new propaganda out this week. Climate change, we haven't experienced anything like this in the past 2,000 years. Climate scientists writing in the journal Nature have found there is no evidence for globally coherent warm and cold periods over the last 2,000 years prior to industrialization. That's significant because climate change deniers have sometimes pointed to epochs like the so-called Little Ice Age or Medieval Warm Period to argue that the current global warming is one among multiple similar global climate events. So what the article is saying is that only climate deniers believe in the Medieval Warm Period and the Little Ice Age. Now let's look at who some of these climate deniers are. Well, this is the 1990 IPCC report. And there it is, the medieval warm period, much warmer than the present, with the little ice age in between. So the world's leading climate scientists all agreed 30 years ago that there was a medieval warm period and little ice age. And these are the people who are now being called climate deniers. And here's a 1981 article from James Hansen, the world's number one climate alarmist. Once again, showing a medieval warm period, a little ice age, and current temperatures lower than the medieval warm period. So now we know he's just a climate denier. One of the favorite tactics of climate alarmists to try to get rid of the medieval warm period is to claim that it only occurred in England. But that simply isn't true. This is from 1975 in the New York Times. The isotopes also reflect the long-term climate changes. A remarkable finding reported in the May 1st issue of Nature is that trends in Greenland for the period 850 to 1700 AD closely match the British record for 1100 to 1950. California tree rings show a climate record similar to the one in Britain. So the medieval warm period was global, and in fact those three locations are the same places which James Hansen used in his study. And here's another article from the New York Times, January 22, 1934. Changing climate indicated in Arctic. And it goes on to describe how Vikings living in Greenland disappeared in the cold during the Little Ice Age. And how Vikings who farmed Greenland during the medieval warm period were buried in graves which later got punctured by tree roots. This is in places in Greenland where the ground is now perpetually frozen and there's no trees. So obviously it was much warmer in Greenland when the Vikings farmed there. Here's another story by Hubert Lamb of the British Meteorological Office. He was described as Britain's top weather historian. He spent much of his career studying the medieval warm period in the Little Ice Age. Here's what he said. By the year 1000 AD, Norsemen were sailing between Iceland and Greenland throughout the year without the hazard of ice flows, and Greenland's Baffin Bay was free of ice. Well, Baffin Bay is now frozen over for at least nine months a year. It was getting warmer. In the 12th century, there were many vineyards in southern England. But by 1300, it became very cold, with a much shorter growing season for crops, resulting in harvest failures and famines in Europe. Here's another story from 1923. There were no glaciers in Europe during the Middle Ages. Since the Middle Ages, there has been a considerable fall in the maximum summer temperature. And the glaciers in Glacier National Park gained most of their mass during the Little Ice Age. These modest glaciers varied in size, tracking climatic changes, but did not grow to their Holocene maximum size until the end of the Little Ice Age, around A.D. 1850. As I always point out, glaciers don't lie, but climate scientists do. There definitely was a Little Ice Age. Also worth remembering that Hannibal crossed the Alps with African elephants in places which would be completely impassable now. Another line of evidence is sea level. This is Pevensey Castle in southeast England. It's now about a mile away from the ocean. But when the Romans and Normans occupied the castle, it was almost completely surrounded by water, which formed a natural moat around the castle. And this is the current Google Earth image. The natural moat is gone, and now the castle is a mile away from the seashore. So when the castle was built, there was no town there. This was all ocean around this side of the castle. So basically, every climate scientist in the world knew about the medieval warm period in the Little Ice Age. Those scientists are now being called climate deniers by the press. So what happened to the medieval warm period in the Little Ice Age? Well, Dr. David Deming from the University of Oklahoma tells us. 
This is his testimony to Congress. I had another interesting experience around the time my paper in Science was published. I received an astonishing email from a major researcher in the area of climate change. He said, we have to get rid of the medieval warm period. Let's watch his testimony now. Right, we'll start with you, Dr. Denning, and thank you for being here from the great University of Oklahoma. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, and distinguished guests, thank you for inviting me to testify today. I am a geologist and geophysicist. I have a bachelor's degree in geology from Indiana University and a PhD in geophysics from the University of Utah. My field of specialization in geophysics is temperature and heat flow. In recent years, I have turned my studies to the history and philosophy of science. In 1995, I published a short paper in the academic journal Science. In that study, I reviewed how borehole temperature data recorded a warming of about one degree Celsius in North America over the last 100 to 150 years. The week the article appeared, I was contacted by a reporter for National Public Radio. He offered to interview me, but only if I would state that the warming was due to human activity. When I refused to do so, he hung up on me. I had another interesting experience around the time my paper in Science was published. I received an astonishing email from a major researcher in the area of climate change. He said, quote, we have to get rid of the medieval warm period, unquote. The medieval warm period was a time of unusually warm weather that began around 1000 AD and persisted until a cold period known as the Little Ice Age took hold in the 14th century. Warmer climate brought a remarkable flowering of prosperity, knowledge, and art to Europe during the High Middle Ages. The existence of the medieval warm period had been recognized in the scientific literature for decades, but now it was a major embarrassment to those maintaining that the 20th century warming was truly anomalous. It had to, quote, be gotten rid of, unquote. So you received that email in 1995 about getting rid of the medieval warm period, and by 1998, Michael Mann had erased it, just as climate scientists said they were going to do. Michael Mann is an extremely dishonest person, and he's also completely delusional. Here's some tweets he made last year. We're not nearing a constitutional crisis. We're there. Our nation is under assault by a dangerous coalition of hostile interests and enablers. Trump, Russia, Putin, Kelly, Nunes, Ryan. We must defend our nation by any means available. And here's a very timely one down at the bottom. Trump, congressional Republicans, and right-wing media telegraphed this development with their heated rhetoric and actions over the past two weeks. Now we know what this was about. Mueller won't just make a case for obstruction. Collusion with Russia seems likely and RNC likely implicated. Michael Mann is paranoid and delusional and makes very strong statements about things he understands nothing about. And he's projecting his dishonesty onto other people. He's made huge amounts of money pushing the global warming scam. Trying to rewrite history is standard operating procedure for climate scientists. And then they try to bully people into accepting their fraudulent activities. And as I keep pointing out, climate science is not a science. It's an organized crime syndicate and the press is complicit. The organization of this scam is perhaps the most disturbing aspect of it. The article on the left is from the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, and the article on the right is from the British Broadcasting Corporation. Note the tremendous similarities between these two articles. An obscure junk science story appears in a journal, and then it gets blasted out by news agencies all over the world. Official banner, headline on top. Climate change, we haven't experienced anything like this in the past 2,000 years. And the BBC version, climate change, current warming unparalleled in 2,000 years. Then below it is the photograph intended to deceive. The ABC photo has a picture of the sun, which has been hot for as long as I can remember. Then they have a yellow sky, which is somehow associated with heat. And then the airplane, which is producing CO2 and causing the heat. Now which one would you believe is heating the earth? This airplane or this giant fusion reactor in the sky? 
I'm going to go with the sun. Now let's look at the BBC propaganda photo. It's a glacier calving into the ocean. It looks like the ice is slumping and must be due to global warming, right? But it has nothing to do with warming. Glaciers are rivers of ice. They flow down from the high country. When they reach the sea, they fall off into the ocean and form icebergs. Like the giant iceberg which broke off of a glacier and destroyed the Titanic in 1912. And then down below the junk science propaganda photo, we have very similar characteristics once again. A block of bold text in both articles, and then below that some smaller text. The style of the propaganda is identical. The headline, the junk science photo, the little bit of bold text below it. This is obviously a highly coordinated propaganda campaign. And this massive blast of heat wave propaganda is released in July, right when it's going to deceive the most people. So it's an obscure journal article which is sent out in headlines all over the world. The formatting of the propaganda is almost identical in different news agencies. This is not independent journalism. It's a highly organized crime syndicate. It bears no resemblance to independent journalism. The global warming scam is not about science, it's not about journalism, it's about propaganda. It's about scaring people, particularly children, into giving up their lifestyle, their freedom, and their money. The use of children for propaganda is an age-old tradition. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science, propaganda, and organized crime for a long time.